to go in and contact that part of you that is witnessing what is going on. That means there's a part of you that actually is observing, that is witnessing what is going on. That part of you is the real you. So try to go in and tune in and be with that. So you get a sense of, try to unite and get a sense of being at that place. Of course, slow inhalations and exhalations. So breathe from the diaphragm. So as you inhale, the stomach should expand. And as you exhale, it should deflate. And the breathing should be slow and quiet like clouds moving across the sky. Started off again, we get new folks in each week, so we try to give them a little insight. And uh, so we're we got some old folks that are, that are back. <laughs> so we're moving. We came out of Stolen Legacy, and from Stolen Legacy, we dealt with uh, the mysteries, the basic orientation. So now we're going through the ten virtues, uh, and then from ten virtues, we're going to go into the seven liberal arts and sciences. So we move through steadfastness, uh, through uh, fidelity, through, uh, devotion, fortitude, and now we're at temperance. So let's get into the exoteric, and then we will get into the esoteric. Temperance, control of one's actions and of the passional nature. Moderation in the indulgence of the appetites and passions. Understanding that any extreme is dangerous. So temperance. Control of one's actions and of the passional nature, the passions. Moderation in the indulgence of the appetites and the passions. So being moderate, the moderation understand that any extreme is dangerous. So too far to the left and too far to the right, any extreme is dangerous. So you're talking about the way of the mean, the Tao, right? The unity between the two, between the yin and the yang, the male and the female, physical, spiritual, the union, the synthesis. Any questions on that? You know, I mean, it's very straightforward. Right. 
moderation. Okay, let's get into some thesaurus. These are synonyms or related words related to temperance. Moderation, restraint, constraint, control, steadiness, evenness, stability, sobriety, self-restraint, self-control, self-denial, abstinence, calmness, gentleness, serenity, tranquility, repose, cool, calm, unexcessiveness, unextremeness, unextravagance, nothing in extreme, happy medium, golden mean, middle way or middle path, moderation. All this other stuff really talks about balance. Right? Main, maintaining balance. So you're talking about controlling your actions, controlling your passion and nature. Uh, which we'll get into, I guess I'll pass this out now. Are you talking about moderation? Moderation? Yeah, moderation and uh, attention. Right. And I, I, I have a quick little thing while you're passing this. This out uh, study from the press telegram. Uh-huh. It said study links fat to prostate cancer, which is not new for anybody who's been mm-hmm. studying the study group. Right. But in it, uh, it says the study found that food intake was highest among blacks. Food intake, food period. Intake. Black people eat more. Mm-hmm. And uh, eat more fat than the Japanese, mm-hmm. Chinese. They went through a whole different list of ethnic groups. Mm-hmm. And consequently, the, oh the, uh, the rate of prostate cancer is a lot higher. And just, just, just to tie that in with temperance. Okay. Well, you know, some of that, because that, that's, not, that's not true on the continent, though, is it? In terms of black people eating a lot. They don't eat a lot. Right. So then some of that could be... And then they eat at a certain time of day. Right. Certain food. Anybody want to see this, I can pass it along. This is the press telegram yesterday or day before. I know... Uh, in my family, because my father came from a small town in Arkansas, and they were very poor. And when he moved to the city, he made sure that he had meat on the table every day. Mm-hmm. Where when they were younger, you know, they may only had meat on Sundays or the weekend. You know, mm-hmm. very sparse. So a lot of, uh, some of it is compensation. You know, in terms of how we were in denial for so long, that then when you get into something, you have a tendency to really want to go hog wild. So, you know, a lot of our habits are are responses and reactions to the conditions of oppression and slavery, to when now we're reacting to things as opposed to being guided by some higher principles. Uh, but yeah. Did you write about the about the fact? I know I I did I made a conscious effort with that myself. I went to when I went to school, I, I struggled through school, and I, I went to school on a meal job, you know, I worked, when I worked eight. And so I said, when I got out, got my degree, and started working, first thing I was to make sure I had plenty of good stuff to eat. Mm-hmm. And so I started that, and I almost ate myself in there, mm-hmm. you know. And so then I had to get right. Right. But that was compensation. Right. Right. Uh, what I passed out is a picture, uh, a, a picture a diagram of the tree of life. Then we're going to get into, um, I've been exposed in Basically, it's made up, it's based upon, it's based upon 10 separats or ten stations, or ten, really, levels of consciousness. It goes like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so we got this one, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course, eight. levels on top. We got an, and soft, and and soft R, which really represents three dimensions of, of, of non-being, non-manifestation. It it if you understand that by theology, this is the new, that which is pre-manifestation, void. And then out of that comes the one, which is like the ta, and then you have the ta and atun, and then you have creation, Cre out of duality, and you have all things. This, is, this represents the ta, or the upper triad, or the higher spiritual realm. This represents like the personality realm. This represents the physical down here. So it's in those three different dimensions. But I want to be getting all that right now. Uh, let me read something to you about this. This came out of Kemet, and out of Kemet, it got this particular format was developed out of the Hebraic or Judeo tradition, which you know came out of Kemet. Um, I just want to read you, and you can get some good information out of this book called A Kabbalistical Tarot, because the tarot really is, actually the tarot is the royal road to God, or to union with God, is what tarot also talks about. And each of the ten sephiroths, the ten different stations, actually represents a field or a stage in the evolution of consciousness, from physical consciousness to spiritual consciousness. It's also the philosophy of how the energies of life operate coming from non-manifestation into manifestation. It talks about how it evolves down. I'll read a little bit from this piece. I'm talking about uh, on page 29. The author is uh, Robert Wayne. It's a textbook of mystical philosophy. It says the tree of life. The tree of life is intended to symbolize the entire universe. A proposition so vast in its implications that some may doubt that such a symbol is even possible. Remember, this is a symbol. This is a, a diagram that aids the mind to be able to conceptualize concepts of how the universe operates. The universe doesn't operate in this form. It's just a diagram. It says. Uh, it is, a, it is a deceptively simple diagram composed of 10 spheres called sephiroths and 22 connecting lines called paths. Collectively, the sephiroths and the paths are called the 32 paths of wisdom. What else do you know that's related to 32? Oh, <laughs> 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 thought. <laughs> 32. Oh, yeah. Related to mystical, uh, philosophical, who comes to mind? Age of um, Christ, Jesus. The age? Uh, when he died or whatever, crucified, something like that. It's 33. Oh, 33 yeah. Right. Okay. It's related, though. It's in there. Mm -hmm. 32 degrees in the masonry. Right. 32 degrees in masonry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was 33 in the third. That's 33 is the, is the right, the, when you go to a shrine, which then is, a, is, a, is another level. Right. So then, but then that's also related to his question, because Christ died or was crucified at 33. And the Shrine degree is 33. Right, 33. You also have 33 vertebrae in your spinal column, mm -hmm. which represents the rod of power, because that's the source upon which all the nerves interact in your body that leads up to the pineal gland, and the cerebral cortex and the cerebral spinal system, which is the energy network for the whole body. So all these things are interrelated. So then, because what they're actually talking about, the tree of life, and also what the Masonic Temple of Solomon is talking about, is you. You're the divine temple. <coughs> How do you build the Temple of Solomon? Solomon represents the soul of man. Solomon, soul of man. 
or son, Saul, old man, Saul, son, son, self. So again, the symbolism was what they were talking about. But I've also brought that out to show you how all these different systems are all talking about the same thing. And so once you can start seeing the basic key words, that's why I would say, well, 32, when it said 32, something pop in your mind besides OJ's number. But, uh, <laughs> and so as you start orientating yourself to these keys, then you can start deciphering what the real meaning of these different systems are really talking about, as opposed to the illusion that a, that a human being literally died at 33. That's not what they're talking about. Christ represents the anointed one of Christos, or Christos is related to light or illumination. Illumination is related to your higher mind, your spiritual self, which is composed of light. So then Jesus, who was the human, became transformed into the Christ. So that means the mortal person then through initiation evolved into his spiritual self. So everyone has that capacity. And so dying on the cross is dying to the physical. The cross is the four, which represents the physical plane, the lower nature. So one then dies to the physical to be resurrected on the spiritual. Again, I, that's a little digression. That's what talking about. Okay. Also, well, I'm going to go there. I'll start going. So, on the, uh, so, get back. It says, the tree of life, the ten sephirots are, one, kether, the crown. Two, chokma or wisdom. Three, bina, understanding. Between bina and the next sephirot is an invisible sephirot known as dath or knowledge. It is not represented on the tree because it is a bridge built by each individual across the abyss existing between the upper sephirot and those below. What they're talking about is the, the invisible right here. It's called DAT. D-A-A-T-H. See, there's a bridge that goes here. Which we're going to talk about in a minute, too. Because we talked about the yad he vadi The yad he vadi Which represents a tetragrammaton of fire, water, air, and earth. Which is the sacred word of Jehovah. But again, all that stuff is still talking about elevation of consciousness, how energy can be channeled based upon will and consciousness. But that, this represents the abyss. And the abyss is, the, is, is a dimension between personality, this represents personality. This represents your higher self. So there's an abyss, or they call it a, a dimension or a zone between your higher self and your personality that's really based upon what they call psychic debris. All of the stuff that you hide or all the such negativity creates a barrier from you contacting your spiritual self. So, uh, so many times people go into the abyss, right? And you go down, Jesus went to hell, had to deal with the demons, mm -hmm. or you go into the, the, the little temptations. That's talking about the abyss. Now, the way that one crosses the abyss is through that, which represents inner knowledge. It's through one developing inner knowledge that one builds the bridge between the personality and their higher or spiritual self. But it's invisible because you're dealing with esoteric inner knowledge as opposed to outer knowledge. That's why it's invisible. You can't see it. It's not that it's not, it is there, but you can't look at it in a normal way. You have to look behind things. Just like wisdom is when you understand the meaning of something and not the thing itself. Anyway, so that's this. How are you spelling it? D A A T H. D A A T H. Now, also understanding that the Hebraic or, or Hebrew came out of the Kemetic. They didn't use vowels. So that really would be DTH. Mm -hmm. And then by adding different types of vowels, you get a different word, but the substance of the word means the same thing. That's Yahi? Yahi Vaji. Jehovah. 
Jehovah, it said Jehovah. Jehovah. You take out the vowels. The J H B H. And J and B is the same numerical value, so it's it's uh, J and Y, same numerical value, so it's Yah here, Jah he. And Jah, it's talking about Jah, Jah represents the one divine, divine, the one, Jah, God. So again, all this stuff related. Anyway, that's a whole other school, that's a whole other, that's another series to get into the tree of life. Eventually, if we keep moving, we have to go there. But this deal will start dealing with numbers. Because each of these things has a number, all the letters have a number, and all those numbers then relate to certain type of cosmic forces or powers. Then we talked about the definition of God was what? Or power of your forces. So if all forces then can be equated to quantity or power or number, the numbers then reflect the powers of God. And so then if all words can be equated to number, then you can really understand the power of the words by understanding the true energy of the word and not just the literal speaking of the word. Because then each word actually has a correct intonation. Now we talk about frequency. And vibration. Vibration. Right. Set up. That's right. Speak that to right. And then those who are properly trained can actually cause for physical change to happen through power of words. Right. You were able to control But also people make changes unconsciously because words do have words do have power. So they're affecting people if they know it or not. So mm-hmm. power in English? Power in yeah, because you st- when I'm speaking, what makes you hear what I'm saying? How do you hear what I'm saying? Right, and what goes on to make you hear? Mm-hmm. What goes on? See, that's why you have to understand physiology and anatomy. That's why science was a prerequisite <coughs> for knowledge. Because if you don't understand how nature operates, how you understand it, what's going on, what's really going on. So, because people are thinking, people thinking words, but what they are actually experiencing is vibration. You're hearing sound, which is a vibration. So, the, my, I'm speaking, and so I'm creating a vibration in, in the airwaves that then impacts your inner ear, which has a membrane. And so, as the air hits your ear at different frequencies, it creates an electrical impulse that's transmitted to your brain that it then registers because we've given certain impulses names by sound sound is the impulse we say this sounds A, this sounds B, this sounds E, etc. So now we think in, what, in the names we've given it but we're not really understanding what's going on. You understand what I'm saying? Understand what's going on? Yeah, when I asked you, what makes you hear? What's really going on when I'm speaking? Because the question was, does English have power? So I say, then if you understood the, 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 the science of speaking, then everything that's spoken has power because it's energy. I'm emitting energy. So although I'm speaking in English, there's equivalent sound in other languages. It's like music, there's only so many notes. So although one group may play at this combination, this group play at this combination, they're still taking the same energy and just rearranging it. But underneath it, it's all still energy. So it has to have power. Kind of related to what he was saying, since uh, all the languages originated from Africa, I mean, is there would there be more power in the original concept of language? 
you say more power. The power does not come from where it originated. The power comes in how it is being utilized. I'll give you an example. Say a certain martial arts technique was originated in China. But now here I am in South Central LA trained and learn a technique. If I learn, if I become very proficient at that technique, I can use it more effectively than a person who's trained in China. You understand what I'm saying? Just because it originated there <coughs> is not what gives it power. What gives it power is the appropriate and how you utilize it is what gives it power. So that's why somebody can pick, somebody, Europeans can take and have taken techniques from Africa and use them more effectively than we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is Yes. Yeah. Like those experiments with dolphins and whales to survive to what they be doing, mm -hmm. you know? It's about the same thing when you're talking about, I guess. Well in its essence it is, because what is what is the if you take if you break it down to its bare minimum, what are you talking about? Talking about sound. That's essentially what you're talking about, right? Sound communication, right? Which, when you break it down, you're talking about frequency, sound waves, which is just a whole part of the spectrum. Because everything we do is a part of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum. So anyway. Is there, there is negative vibration and there's positive vibration, right? Yeah, and that's relative. <coughs> when I say it's relative, it's in reference to what you, t you know, in reference to, oh, I guess, what plane are you talking about, right? Something that might be negative on a physical plane may not be negative on a mental plane in terms of its energy. Something that's negative to you could be positive for a mouth. Yeah. Right. But that's a perception, though, isn't it? It's not a, a the, the vibration. You know, it's a transmission of energy, and whoever receives it, then, then their interpretation is their perception, and that's biased by what they where they're coming from. I would go no. Something can physically. I say it's reference to the the, the plane you're talking about. When I say that is. It's, Things that exist on a, on a say on the physical plane, your body needs certain type of things for it to be in harmony. If you give it certain types of energy, it can become very destructive to your physical body. Mm -hmm. So on that level, it becomes negative. But on another level, it can be positive because you could gain an understanding and awareness from that negative experience. It makes you become wiser. You follow what I'm saying? You follow yeah, what I'm saying? It's still a reception, though, isn't it? You said a reception or a perception? Reception. I mean, you receive, and, and it, it becomes a perception. Once you receive it and, and interpret it, it then becomes your perception. Mm -hmm. If I don't receive those lives, no matter where they are, then they have no, no impact on me. If you don't receive them, if I don't receive, receive, don't receive them. right? Yeah, if you don't receive, them. and once if I want to get two, so we can get it. To, yeah, okay. All this is relative stuff, here. right? But yeah, they are positive and negative energy. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the the particular situation defines what's positive and negative. So you have to understand the nature of the things you're, you're talking about. And that defines the positive and negative. So that's why I use the question for understanding is related to what? <coughs> reference point. Yeah. And yes, there is. Okay, so I don't want to get too good. I was just trying to give you some insight because we're going to get into talking about temperance as one of the sephirots. Uh, then there's ten other, there are seven other uh, stations, but they're all listed on the, the ten. It's also interesting that ten, 
which is really one through nine, one to nine, zero to nine is also ten. Uh, which also, if you look at Memphite theology, and I always relate to Memphite theology because that's where we're coming out of the stolen legacy, is that if you take the noon, which is the zero, and then uh, the tie that then was, in terms of the physical universe, equated with our tomb, and then he created nine other gods, or eight other, plus itself made nine. So then the zero, which is the nothing, plus the nine, that gives you the ten which is the basis of our numerical computation. So all things in the universe within our function are related to 10, which is really 0, 1 through 9. And remember I did that exercise, hopefully you remember the exercise we did on how 9 is the only number if you add it by itself or multiply it by itself, you're going to get itself. So if you take 0 through 9, right, I did before 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then take 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then you add all those columns up, you'll get 9. And then if you add all those 9s up, you're going to get, what is it, 9 times 9 is 89, right, 81, which is 9, or 10 times 9 is 90, which is 9. And then if you multiply 9 by its multiple, it's also going to come up to a final 9. So basically what it's saying is those nine digits, which really are ten, make up all the primary digits for existence and being. The divine enad, divine nine. Which is really a tetrax, I don't want to start going there, but which is the, uh, the ten, but I don't want to go there. Uh, I just want to talk about the 9 and the 10, showing you how these, the, really I want to show is how you can go back to the Memphite theology and see how this format came out of Memphite theology. So, yeah. Can we get that thought together? Yeah. Yes. And that, that system, that, that works in our soul system. Does it work in the whole universe? The second word you talked about it before. Okay. <laughs> said, does it work in the whole universe? Does what work? This system. Of the nine? Uh -huh. As far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm always open, you know. Uh, what's new knowledge come? We'll change. But based upon the, all the teachings, this is the, the prime archetype, you know, the primal structure for the universe is based upon this form. That's why the ancients could project or were <coughs> prophetic and been able to project into the future or the past or into other dimensions because if as above, so below, or macrocosm, microcosm, and if I know that this is true for this, and then I know that this is related to that, that I also can, can build the other part out. It's almost like uh, triangulation and stuff in mathematics in terms of, you know, if I know the height of something and the distance over here, and I know the distance between this point and that point, I can calculate through relationship how high the thing is over there, although I'm not in contact with it. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why math and science is primary. That's why they keep us out of math and science. Because if you don't have a basic knowledge of math and science, and you start talking about these ideas, you don't have the data to figure out really what's happening. Although you might can relate to it. Yeah, that, you know, yeah, that seems happening. But you don't understand. Because you can't break it down. But you talk about square the plot. Yeah, square, yeah. Dot to a square plus b squared to c squared. Right. What does that really mean? What's happening? But anyway. Well, I was thinking that maybe we say it doesn't apply to the universe because everything has a pattern. Right. And once you learn the patterns, uh, you get in, get in tune with the patterns, and you just follow the patterns, right? No matter what it is. Now, what's the experience of the other Everything just has a pattern. Yeah, nature geometrizes. Nature geometrizes. 
I mean, everything in nature is based upon a geometrical form. It's geometry. Our lives run in cycles as well. Think, right? Everything, yeah. You, you breathe in cycles. You eat in cycles. You, you know, you sleep. Everything is based upon cycles, which is pattern, which is number. That's why the whole thing about Pythagoreans talked about number was really the true nature of the divinity. But well, I was going to say earlier while we were dealing with numbers that these are uh, Arabian, Arabian numbers, uh, Arabic numbers, yeah, uh-huh. Arabic numbers. The, the Kemetics, they had a different uh, way about numbers. They had a different way of notating. Numbers. Right, but the equivalent is underneath the notation is it just like the Chinese has a way of notation and the so then, and the uh, the Hebraic had a different way of notating how they wrote it, but underneath it, they were defining the same thing. All right. It's fun to me talking about ten fingers, ten toes. You got five basic. Two arms, two legs, and a head. You know, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's all. But I mean, your body is is numerical. Different parts are proportionate to the whole thing. I think your forearm is the thing you have a body. You can just go from your 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 foot and just keep measuring up, and it'd be about I think either four or five forearms in your whole body. I know your leg here is just. Just as long as the fingertip to fingertip that you are spread up. Right. So nature geometrized. That's a law. Uh, okay. So that's kind of give we kind of give you some background on this Kabbalah. So now let's get into one of the uh, so that is the Yes. Then, uh, in Hebrews. Oh, that, is that the right one? Wait a minute. I've got two different ones. Uh, different. Okay. Numbers. Give me the one back on the sexual problem. <laughs> 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 Everybody get one of the first ones? Got to make another one. What was the first one? The first one's on the, uh, I don't have it anymore. No, I don't think I made it. I thought I made it. Here, you were doing this. Okay, I see you It's called uh, the, the Temperance, the 14th key. And it comes out again out of this book on the Kabbalistic Terror. I'm not going to, I'm going to jump around some of this stuff because I don't want to. Some of it, if you're not into the tarot, can become more confusing. So two things, I'm trying to give it to you to, you know, introduce you to another body of knowledge. So you have some introduction to it. And then a lot of this stuff is a blend. This guy took a lot of the different schools of thought and started blending them together to look at some of the basic concepts. So these things branch off into different schools. Mm-hmm. And these little schools have its own little interpretation, but generally is dealing with the same knowledge, but it depends upon the time, the, the area, and all that. They have a different little language, different little twist to it. <clears throat> Again, what we're trying to do is get you to see the universal part, and also just introduce you to all these different systems so that you can understand that what the systems are really talking about as opposed to what's popular. Society, you know, they talk about tarot cards, movie tarot readings. And, yeah, you can't do that, but that is not the purpose, true purpose of it. It was a philosophical system talking about universal forces. But because humans are a microcosm of the universe, and everything that's in the greater universe is in you, then I can take that philosophical system and I can do divination on it because you are a little universe. And so those same forces are in you, so then I can then manipulate those various devices and, and if I'm trained I can read, give you reading in terms of what energy is operating in your life and what pathways you're going on and what you're being confronted with and those kind of things. So but it's really a secondary use of the system. It's not the primary use of the system. 
Because once you understand how the system operates, you'll understand how the universe operates, then you can understand how those forces are operating in your own mind. You don't need nobody to tell you nothing. Because you can just get in tune with it and we'll know what's going on. That's what it's really all about. It's supposed to be between you and the energy. No outside person telling you this or that or you got to go to somebody. The ultimate is for you to unite and understand it and get in tune with it and be guided by it. And that's what the ultimate destiny of the human race is. That's what true democracy is based upon. When they talk about Freemasonry, that's what they're talking about. A free mason, free man. Be totally free of external dictates and operate in tune with the universe. Because once the, if everybody goes in and unites with their divine part in you, then we all gonna be in unity. Because it's one creation. So if we go get in tune with the one that's in us, we all gonna be in tune. It's like we dancing, right? And it's, it's the one. You might be doing your own particular little move, but as long as you're in tune with the one, we all gonna be dancing together. And that's really what the whole ultimate goal is. Now back to this temperance. Let's get into temperance. Uh, see, as you see, each of these tarots <coughs> has a color. It has a sound. This is G sharp. It has a sign. It has a, a meaning because it's related to uh, the Hebrew letters. It also can evolve out of the comedic. It has a meaning. Uh, it also has an esoteric title. All these things are clues that if you follow them can give you deeper insight in terms of what the whole topic is talking about. So it says the esoteric top, uh, top title is the daughter of the reconcilers, the bringer forth of life. This is very key because then we went back and we were talking about temperance deal with not going to any extreme. The way of the mean. The middle path. Creating balance, harmony, repose, uh, calmness. So, if things are constantly teeter-tottering back and forth, right? You can't make your mind up, you're tripping on this or that. You're not at balance, you're not at rest. You're in confusion, you got problems. It's only when you understand and reconcile the contradiction, you are you at rest. The only way you can meditate is you have to create a balance between what's happening on the outside and what's happening on the inside. Then you can be at rest. But if you agitate, you trip off of, you know, these thoughts are going here and your body is this way and all that, you're not gonna be able to focus in. You're not gonna be at peace, at calmness, at balance, at repose. Which is also an attribute of my eye. Harmony. So then the way you reach truth is by reconciling contradictions or extremes. And we live, humans are the product of two extremes. What are those two extremes? I said humans are the product of two extremes. That, yeah. That. Well, I'm fishing for something else, though. All that is true is what you're talking about. I was looking at spiritual and material. We're products of spiritual and material. Because our inner self what is animating us is a, from a spiritual so all of it is spiritual but our bodies is also then made up of the material that's what the part that passes away but then your spiritual self is immortal it doesn't pass away so you're living or existing in this duality all the time and the whole point is, is to be able to harmonize or reconcile those two realities and then you can gain some peace once you have become peaceful and calm, then you will operate from your true self. So then society keeps you agitated, right? It keeps you agitated. 
So by keeping you agitated, it keeps you off balance. Mm -hmm. So then when you're off balance, then I can keep you off balance very easily. And when you're balanced, it's difficult for me to push you over or to knock you over. So then a part of the goal of society is to constantly keep you off balance. Yeah. Right. So it's always something new, always something different outwardly, although it's underneath of the same old crap. Mm -hmm. But they keep you thinking, so you got to keep trying to readjust, readjust, readjust. Yeah. You can't get right. settled. Mm -hmm. I just had this conversation with some extremists, and they said that. <laughs> 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 they was like, you know, and we all. Because, yeah, because see, I told them I'm putting the moon. Mm -hmm. And so I was saying, you know, they were asking me, well, why do I want to quit the movement? And I'm saying, well, I'm quitting because, uh, you know, certain things that are going on, but mostly I just want to try to find a comfortable middle where I could be, and it's, you know, where I could be black and, and deal with these other people. You know what I'm saying? Somewhere in there is a, you know, but I was told that uh, there is no such thing as a middle ground. You know? Yeah, see, because you have to get along with these people. With people? With white people. Caucasians, I'm sorry. Whatever. <laughs> right. I believe for the comfort But I'm not trying to find That's not true. Uh, you you can't see, see, but now you're you're operating from personality. Spiritual. Yeah, you're operating from personality. Because the universe, what is my eye? Balance. Oh, well. Yeah. So how can you not find that if that is the ultimate reality? <coughs> the only way you will not find it is by not uniting or abiding by it. So people are going around talking about my eye, my eye, my eye. And they're constantly in a state of anger. If you are so far to the left and that you can't even speak to white people, can't get along with them, then you lose half or something is not right because you have to... Because even if we, even if they wasn't in control, even if they wasn't in control, to keep something inside of you straight, to be able to, to you know what I'm saying, to, to buy and, and go places and stuff. Now we deal with the society that we deal with, and you have to be able to get along with people. You know see, all that's a function, but see, that's a function of a narrow understanding. Oh no, on the people who who are reacting. People are reacting. <laughs> so it's a narrow understanding. It's a, it's understandable. It's understandable. Because the other thing is that then you you need to also expand your awareness so you will also the understanding why they're the way they are. And then you can still be with people who are in extreme and still be peaceful or in harmony yourself. Right. Because the center stars with me, I have to be temperance, right? Right. right. And on that, we'll keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> it says, <laughs> the path of uh, Samik, and again, I'm, I'm not a, a, a specialist in the Hebrew language, but it's temperance. And again, uh, it's talking about leading from the specific words, it's talking about Yasa the Tipper, it's talking about leaning from nine to six. And each of those represents a certain state of consciousness. So it says, from the moon to the sun, from personality to the higher self. Now when you read this, this is giving you insights. Because it says, from the moon to the sun, from personality to higher self. So that means that the moon is equal to personality, and the sun is equal to higher self. The moon, it reflects the light of the sun. So the personality reflects the light of the higher self. So just that right there, if you really think about and reflect on what's being said, you can get great gain, profound insights in terms of how you operate the same way that the universe operates. So again, we were made in the image of God. So the same forces operate in the universe operate in you, as opposed to you saying you physically, God looks like a, like a physical person. No, they're talking about the energies that operate within you.
to me and says, it is among the most important and difficult paths of the entire tree, a key word. Temperance, which deals with the capacity to reconcile extremes, is the most difficult path. And the, the path, each of these paths represent a part of the initiatory process, moving up to kingship. The top keither is the crown. Who wears the crown? King wears the crown. We talked about what the crown really represent. Mm -hmm. What the king really represent? It's supposed to represent one who's becoming human. So it says, uh, and this path on which the very enormity of the great work may be experienced. The great work is to spiritualize matter. Is the great work. <clears throat> that was that's the ultimate goal of being is to spiritualize. That's why even humans are in existing, is to gain spiritual consciousness, is to unite with spiritual reality. We wouldn't even be here if that goal didn't exist. That goal is driving everything that we're going through is related to that reference point. That's the ultimate reference point. So then if you're gonna then operate from the universal or the ultimate, then everything you did would be related to that reality to spiritualize matter or spiritualize the world, or spiritualize your life. That means how you eat, how you speak, how you dress, how you relate to people would always be related to spiritualization. In ancient times, in terms of high civilization, high culture, everything was related to that reference point, the son of bonum. The greatest good, back to Stone Lakes. Salvation of the soul, liberation of the soul. So we're talking about liberation, what are we really talking about? So it says, it has been called a path which is the dark night of the soul. A path on which one enters a deep tunnel in the belief that the light is to be found at the end of it. This is a path of trial and temptation. So then reconciliation is related to trial and temptation. So every moment of every day, you're going through Armageddon, right? You're being weighed in the balance. <clears throat> it ain't the last judgment day you weigh. It's every moment of every day you're being weighed against the feather of my eye. Mm. Your heart is in the scale. Your heart represents perception. So in the spiritual perception, because pata is the heart and tongue of the noon. And so the tongue is that part of the scale which measures how in harmony or disharmony you are with the truth. So you have heart, truth, and then the tongue measure. Now tongue, your tongue, represents what you speak. And the power is in the word, not just what you say, but what is motivated, what is the energy behind what you're saying. Because you know, a lot of people say a lot of things, but it's what they're saying with the real thing. It's what is behind what they're saying is the real thing. So then do you just listen to people externally? Or do you really look at what's behind what people are saying? Because some people talk real crazy. They really ask me for help. Yeah. Well, now it's the power. The power is in the word. But the power is really in the mind. Because the word is, can stand alone as defined by whatever your experience takes you. Like, it's really the motive. Behind the word. Okay, so you're inside that person's mind now. Yeah, that's empathy. To really understand anyone, you have to empathize and put yourself in their place. Or you really won't communicate with them. You just give out, but you really won't connect. That's what's creating a, problem, a heavy problem for African Americans because I just had a conversation today with a sister talking about they need, African Americans need to have a ritual where they bury slavery. Yeah so that we can then move beyond that. 
So we constantly, it's like carrying this, this, all these corpses. We're like chained to all these corpses and we're dragging that around with us every day. But they're not really corpses. Sure they are. No. Oh. You can go places right now and see the vestiges of slavery in its fullest form. Yeah. Right now, us living like that, that's yeah. not a corpse. Until we wipe out those things, then you see, but what is, but what is, but what is, what is perpetuating that condition? Well, our inaction, maybe, or maybe our lack of consciousness, but I know people that are living in dire states and, you know, they're just there, they're stuck. Yeah. And until we, or someone like us, move them out of that position, that's going to be our burden. Yeah, but it's So we don't care that. But see, that's not that wasn't the that wasn't the statement. The statement wasn't that these conditions didn't exist. The statement was that we need to bury slavery so that we can go beyond slavery. Yeah, but you can't take you can't initiate new business until you take care of the old business. You cannot change old business until you create new business. Because everything is consciousness. <laughs> now everything is consciousness. You cannot change one level of consciousness at the same level. The only way you change a level of consciousness is by a higher level of consciousness. Because everything is energy. So if you operate at a three and you bring a three, you still have a three. So if you want to move beyond a three, you've got to bring a four, five, six, or seven. So if people are still identifying as a three, we will keep perpetuating three. Okay, but see that's so we have to get a new identity. Okay, but that's just like Rodney King. I don't see what I see. What are you talking about? In order to move to the next level, I can't see what I see. Why? How will we explain what you mean? The encumbrance is I'm encumbered by the things that are around me, the problems that need to be taken care of. I want to move to the next level. But if I move to the next level, then that means that I walk on those things that are in front of me. No. You walk on them? Well, I move over. Or I ignore them. I have to go to the next level in order to bring something back. Okay. You mean uh, I deny love of people? We'll, we'll hit this and then we'll move no. on. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's Two things cannot occupy the same space at right. the same time. So then, if you move to create the new, you displace the old. Is that true? Well, I'll accept the displacement. I, you, you, I displace it, I don't, I don't pass it, I just move it over. Well, see, the issue that you're dealing with is, do you think that there's going to be simultaneous healing? Do you heal simultaneously? No, but you see, that's, well, that's, that's, something, that's what I'm saying. Except that that's, that's something that needs to be resolved, you know, in, in my mind. Well, simply okay. because, yeah, all simply all because it's, it's more, you know, it's more to it. Like, I, I recognize the different stages of development. Right. But at each one of these stages, we may be given something at each level. Right. You see. Right. We're getting back to the original statement, very slavery. Yeah. Right. Exactly what is being buried. Are we talking about... Uh, and the dependence on a system is that what we're doing, or are we bearing the physical thought of incarceration? We're or bearing, or well, what I would we're, we're, we're bearing our identification with slavery. But which is what though? So what's 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 in the coffin? What's in the casket exactly? <clears throat> Was in the casket? Yeah. yeah. The slave is, experience. Is the slave experience. The We're saying what the, it would be a declaration that we are no longer living based upon the slave experience. We are now moving to another level of identity. Right now we still react from, we still react from and even identify ourselves from the slave experience. Hey! Which means you, yeah. Yeah. you do, yeah. you do. If you did not, if you did not, you would not be struggling 
or not even be doubtful of operating from an African-centered perspective. Today, people are talking about operating from an African-centered perspective, but their behavior is not African-centered. Which means you are still then tied to the African-American experience. You need to put it to rest. If you don't put it to rest, then you're going to carry it around with you, and it will weigh you down from moving into the future. So what do you put in the box? See, that's the slave experience. Because your identification with, do you identify with slavery? Do you still, like you were saying, Rodney King, do I and then, you know, all these things you mentioned yeah. are still functions of a level and state of consciousness. Well, ha on the, the, and I'll finish. In, in many, well, I'll yeah, take it straight out. <coughs> we baby ourselves too much. Like we whine thing. and cry too oh, much. Yeah, it, is. it is an excuse. It's bullshit. Because it's all in your mind. It's bullshit. Rodney King, what's happening in the school, all that crap is bullshit, man. It's all in the mind based on identity. Once you change your identity, you will change your reality. Yeah, but see, what you're saying is, is like, like that can be something that you can just will. And you can. Yeah. In the 60s, I will give you an example for those who weren't there. Please. In the 60s, <laughs> you had individuals that one day was a stone Negro, right. and when the short period of time, sometimes weeks and months, became diehard revolutionaries. Do or die, totally committed to their life, to the movement and the struggle. And then a short time after that, they reverted to form. Yeah, because of other things. That ain't the thing I'm saying. I react to your question that you can't make this leap. You can't just change. Like, you can. When I got off, and I don't want to go personal, but when I got off of vegetarianism, I just made my mind up and changed and never went back. That's what I'm saying. It's all in your mind. Everything is in your your mind. Well, I can't disagree with that. And so we can do whatever we want. Now, by you saying you can't do that, does that come from an African-centered perspective or a Eurocentric perspective? Well, we, we won't say we can't do it. Let's you just say, said that. No, you just no. said that. Well, then, okay. Then, then, then maybe I misspoke. Which is proving my point. No, maybe I misspoke because I agree that it's in the mind. Right. But I still say that it's one of those things where at this level, I'm refusing to walk away from those that I feel need help. Now, why do you think it's walking so, away? It's not even if two there. things not cannot there. occupy the same space at the same time, that's right. if you say you understand some of these things right. and that the universe is one, mm -hmm. it is not disconnected. So whatever you do influences the whole. So how are you going to walk away? You connect it. You cannot walk away. Right. So then anything you do is affects the whole. So now the question is, what is the reference point upon which you're doing what you're doing? And again, what is your time frame? Okay. We're still tied to this little old 400 years. Yes, that's probably true. So I, I go back and say, you're living like you had one bad day. You had this 24-hour right. stomach flu, and you felt like you was about to die. Right. Right. So now you're going to keep carrying that one day, talking about it every day, then you, you, you're, you're carrying that crap around. And that's what we're doing. We spend too much energy tripping off of all that stuff. It did happen, yeah. Just like... Hell, man, I stuck myself in the eye today, and it was like for 45 minutes, I couldn't open my eye. And if I kept coming here tripping off my eye, my eye, I couldn't even give a damn lecture. Because I'm like, my eye, well, wait a minute, my eye. Oh, okay, I talk, oh, my eye. My eye. That's why you're talking about shit about your eyes. Don't give us a lecture. Then we do the same thing about slavery. And that's what I'm saying. Put the damn thing to rest and move forward. Yep. 
I think he's talking about the mentality of slavery and the stigma that goes with it. Just like in school, I mean, the reason these classes are happening now is because we're searching for our identity. As opposed to what we learned in school about us originating from Africa as slaves. That's all we knew before we started coming to classes like this. So he's talking about the mentality of slavery, the stigma. Bury that and move on. It's not, it's not, it's not, what you talk about your brother being in stressful yeah. condition. I understand. I understand, yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And and I, I, I hear where he is. I understand that. I hear where he is. And doing black history month is a trip. Man. We'll, 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 we'll slavery. Talk about it. <laughs> That's where they start. Black History Month, slavery. It's like we ain't never had a life before slavery. We don't have a life after slavery. But I mean, also, yeah. ritual itself, the process of the, of the process of the act, of enacting that, creates a psychic mm -hmm. condition that also then impels you forward. Just like when somebody dies, if you don't never properly put that person to rest, you then carry the mourning around with you all the time. That's a part of existence. You have to put things to rest. Isn't it an agitation which we're talking about we have to overcome to go to the next level? I mean, what are you saying? It's an agitation every time they bring it up. Our example. Right. And we're talking about temperance, reconciling. Reconciling. When you come become at repose. But now we're reactive. We're not operating off a future agenda or goal, we're reacting to a present condition that is an extension of this whole Euro slave trip. And because we've tied to that, we can't come together and focus on what we want to do. We should have, we, if it's Orientals, if it's Japanese, if it's Middle East, if it's Hispanics, Europeans or whatever, we supposed to have an agenda regardless of who it is. If it's bourgeois blood, if it's bloods in the hood, or whoever, we're supposed to have an agenda of where we're trying to go. So we stop being reactive. That is the primary, that is the primary deficiency. It's the primary deficiency. So you talk about setting the goal. Yeah, the future. Uh, Right. What are you trying to create as opposed to what are you reacting to? He's talking about Rodney King and stuff like that. Rodney King goes on 24-7. Don't use Rodney King as anything. But you used it. No, but I used it because yeah. that I knew other people would understand it if I said that. But I that's why said, I'm saying that. Well, I could have said something else. What, like what? But, but the point was that there are things Things, live things, real things that exist that take your attention from day to day. You have to deal with those things in the course of dealing with other things. We just talked about that a little earlier. That every, all of these things are part of the trials and tribulations that you go through. We can see those things. We can work with those things. There's no problem with that. The problem is, is as you try to communicate and move through that and relate to other people, you can't get, there is no instantaneous movement from one level to the next. What is an example of what you're talking about? You uh, got the OJ case going on. Right. If, if you sit the stage and watch OJ all day, you right. won't get anything else done. Right? Right. Okay. And then also, uh, in, 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 in effect, <laughs> Watching those days in a sense, watching the slave, is keeping the slave mentality is what you're saying. Right. It's not bearing it, saying, okay, we, uh, I'm going to do something with this time that will right. help more people. They right. will help, as opposed to wasting my time watching the right. I, 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 I think that's more yeah. practical. It's, it's a, uh, uh, no, not the Basically, let's move on, because it's in the context of temperance, and reconciliation, patience, calmness, repose, balance. And basically what I'm talking about is move beyond the extremes, move beyond 
the, the conflicts, the conflicts still exist at that level. They will always exist at that level. But I mean, if you, if, see, it's, it's a function of consciousness, because if you go, if you are conscious of what's going on in your body at this moment, conflict is going on there right now. You know what I'm saying? Stuff's dying, stuff is going through all kind of transformation. You know, so that's a fact. But then you don't react off that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not what you are. You don't let that reality become your basis of operating. Now you're aware of it, but your base of operation is another level. And see, once you move to that level, once you move to that level, you then also activate other powers and forces on that level that then starts to bring that energy, bring more of that energy to bear on the situation that actually elevates the other stuff that's going on. By, by, by you putting your mind, like I say, looking at OJ and tripping off with the, okay, now this, this, this person got kicked off, and all that blood, da, da, da. see, we say what, it's all energy. So that's me that your mind is vibrating at that level, which then means you are feeding that level. Do you understand what I'm saying? So then in actuality, you are feeding the beast that you say you're, you're fighting against. You're feeding it because you're giving it energy. So as we, if we can't bury all that slavery, then by us constantly dwelling on it and dealing with it, we're feeding it, which means we are enslaving ourselves. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, not to belabor the point, I really need to move on. We have a part in one of the books, one of the five books, uh, There's a River, Vincent Harding. Mm -hmm. And it, he mentions the slave-making process. Mm -hmm. And he lists five points of how Europeans may turn Africans into slaves. Mm -hmm. And one of them was abject uh, obedience and identif uh, negative identification with Africa. Mm -hmm. um, another one was the master's welfare and uh, uh, being oh, identified with the slave welfare, welfare of the slave welfare mm -hmm. and, and fear of anything we do we be shot down. <coughs> like all of us were killed. Anybody who was revolutionary was killed. There's no need fighting the system because they don't kill. Those are three or four of the things that the slave made the process. So right. specifically, when I'm saying what goes in the coffin, unless we know what goes in the coffin, we ain't all burying the same thing. So oh, what, yeah, I mean, what, what is that experience that needs to be buried? The identification, well, you want to get specific with me, we have to sit down and, and cover that. May, if I said it, yeah. I'm we saying, have a ritual and bury something. Right. What we bury that. We bury that. We are no longer. I would bury that. We are no longer identifying with the slave experience. We're putting the slave to rest. And all those that died in slavery, we're going to acknowledge all those who died in slavery. You know, we're going to mourn all those, and we go through the ritual of mourning all those and recognizing all those that died in slavery. And then after we come out of that mourning, out of that ritual, we now moving forward as the new Africans that are liberated from that. So now, well, that also then means <coughs> where we move it to. But the fact that the, if we were, if, now the statement, inheriting the statement means that those who participate in it got to come to some kind of an understanding, which means that you know, it wouldn't happen next week because we'd have to come to some basic agreements, those who participated in it, on what the whole thing was about. But the point was, in, in, in general, is that you put that, that does not become the dominant focus. If we're saying, because we're talking about it now, but we're still operating out of the African American experience. And I think that the critical, the, the critical issue is we don't, we're not really understanding how radical a change we need to have happen in how we behave. And that means that, you know, we talk, okay, this group right here, we said we're gonna have a true African cultural center. Well then, what does that really mean? 
to have an African cultural center as opposed to a Negro cultural center or an African American cultural center? What does that really mean in terms of the behaviors of those who say that they are really members of the center? Does that just mean I pay my dues and I come to a, to a lecture and okay, I'm a member? What is the standards for this new behavior? And what is happening is we are bringing our old behaviors in and because we say we're operating with, you know, Kufi on and all this, that is African. We're really not evaluating and critiquing what we're really doing. You know, in, in, to really say, well, if African is collective, if African is communal, if African is spiritual, if African is organic, if African also recognize the unit between the past, the present, and the future, if African says the children are the future and our greatest resource, then based upon those six things, let's look at our behavior and see do they match those standards or something else. As opposed to the slave, is survival mode. You know, and the one thing that we need, it's like all these moves about panther and all that, what it's, what it's really saying esoterically is what we need to be dealing with is revolution. See, the thing that we don't talk about today that we talked about then is being a revolutionary. And that was a commitment. Like homeboy said, he's gonna drop out the movement. You can't drop out no movement. <laughs> I know, but... But then don't say that. You say, <laughs> don't say you know, but then you're going to talk one way, then you don't know. Yeah. You know, see, that's, that's slave mentality. Because the white man does what? He say one thing and don't mean what he say. And the key thing we're talking about here is the word made flesh. So make your word flesh. Make it real. And if you ain't gonna make it real, don't say it. So if you say you're gonna be a member, be a member. If you don't want to be a member, then don't say you want to be a member. Say you don't want to be a member. That's cool. But don't say you're gonna be a member and then be a Negro. You undermine what we're doing. Because then somebody else come in and they say, oh, this is African, but then it's like half-stepping. So now we're defining African as being half-stepping. I'm saying this is what I'm saying. We gotta put all that bullshit to, death, to, to rest. And then everybody who steps out of that gotta come forward on, <coughs> this, on a new stroke. Or don't come forward. Because that's what time it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just getting real soon. Anyway, let me finish this. Okay. Well, this is related. This is related. It sounds like you're saying that to be a member of the African Senate. We need to get initiated. That's true. If you was really gonna go back to the African, yeah, you have a, and in a sense it, it, it's a late, it's kind of a they have one, but it's not, you know, tight. You know, it's cause they, you know, they say come study these books and do this, that's initiation, participate, that's it. But it's not. You know, in the you know, the real initiation when you walk in the door, you don't get back out until you go get through. We need a, a more strict structure. You need levels. You need levels. Usually there's three levels. You know, you have a general level, the general public, so you don't exclude them so they can just get introduced. Then you have another level for those that are a little bit more curious. Then you have a core for the hardcore. It's extreme. It ain't extreme. No, it ain't extreme. It's not extreme. It's, not extreme. it's, it's, hardcore. it's, it's like in martial arts. You got white belt level, you got a green belt level, and the black black the white green belts can't come train with the black belts. Well, and you can come train with them, right. but you got to become a black belt. So it's open to whoever, anybody who want to come, so but you got to go through the, the changes to get the trials and the temptations to get there. So we can say more advanced, the more advanced levels. Those. You can put it like that. Yeah, it yeah deeper level. I say deeper. Yes, deeper level. Deeper level. Yeah, it's deeper level.
And that's, you know. So anyway, but back to temperance. Although all this related to temperance, right? I'm trying to reconcile. No, but, I'm, but I'm curious, though. I'm curious uh, about the brothers and sisters when they first were being initiated into uh, uh, you know, the lodges and stuff back in Kevin. And they had to show these virtues, and they had to show all ten of them. Or you had to be, yeah, you had to, you had to be, you had to be perfect, but you had to be well endowed. That means you had to be truly living from sincerely living to to move in that direction, in, so a, in not a bullshit way, in a real way. So they had to get the training prior to they were initiated into these. You uh, had, you had, you had preparation. Yeah, preparation. it was level of degrees. You know, it's like you might come in and hook up with me. I might just have you do. You might just have to work for me. Right to the passage. You know, you might just. I have you clean up. You might have to come into the center. You 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 maintain the center. You clean it up. You paint it. You know, you open and close it. You do security. You right. run to the store. You do all of that. And then after a while, you know, then I drop little bits and pieces to you here and there, you know, see how you took it. Right. You know, and if you had to you develop patience and fortitude and you was humble and sincere and all this, and say, okay, this is, yeah, okay, then I'll give you some more. You know, then I'll give you some more. Then after you get to a certain level, then okay, then you pick up somebody and start sifting through. I see. So it's I see, I you want to go look at some of those kung fu movies on the Shaolin Temple? Yeah. Just look at, with, it's running it down. Because the Shaolin Temple was, was temples, temples. It was a system of initiation, the same thing. So you could be strong and one something, and weak in something else, but you would learn it as you be more and more involved in the temple, right? Because everybody don't have wisdom. <laughs> You know, no, no, everybody has wisdom. Everybody doesn't have the same proficiency. The same Did you read Stone Legacy? <laughs> 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 Did yeah. it talk about the 42 books of Hermes? Yeah. Talked about the procession yes. and the different orders of the priest mm -hmm. and how different priests specialize in different things. Mm -hmm. But okay. everybody had to go through the fundamentals. That's the virtue. Virtues and the, and the seven of arts and sciences. <coughs> There's a book. I, I'll hope that we talked about. I if I remember it. I know how you had different temples, and there were there was a certain there was a certain temple that was general that the masses went through, and then you specialized on on other levels based upon the call. Everybody's not called. You know the 80-20 rule. And even in this organization, only 20% of the people are going to do 80% of work. That's just the way it is. So the key thing is understanding who's that 20%. You know, 20% of your activity is going to generate 80% of your, your responses. So what's that 20% of the activity? So you can focus in on those to get the greatest effect. Okay, so let's keep moving here. Uh, then it talks about different symbolism, which are keys if you're going to, everybody's not going to become a metaphysician and so a lot of stuff, everybody's not going to be that concerned about it. But those who want to get deeper, all these things are clues to unravel these mysteries. So it says here, uh, it says this is the path of trial and temptation called the intelligence of probation. Key word right there, probation the probationary path. Until you can reconcile these extremes, you're still on the probationary path. Because if you can't reconcile extremes, then as you start to elevate your consciousness and deal with higher levels of energy, as you become energized, whatever extremes you haven't reconciled are going to become energized and throw you all off whack. So it says, uh, in his 777, Crowley, Crowley had a particular school, it was this white guy who developed, he went back, he, started getting to the various states of meditation and reconnecting the spirit of Peru and was saying there's a new epoch coming and his goal was to bring forth these ancient comedic rituals back to the Western world. So he engaged in all these various kinds of, uh, a lot of times too far to the left and he got into a lot of stuff dealing with sexual rituals and 
uh, alter states of consciousness and all this. He pulled out a lot of information out, but a lot of this stuff is out there. So, but that's who this guy is. So, I don't really, unless you are going to be expand, you don't have to get involved with him. Uh, anyway, he's talking about the wound preserving life. Self control and self sacrifice govern the will. So then we're talking about we really want to be successful. You got to have self control and self sacrifice. All these faiths direct us to the idea that we, that that behind this car ultimately is the great mother, the Yahivahi of the Elohim of Bina. Bina is the second sephirah, right? I believe that's right. Third, third, third. third okay. The second is the father. Third is Bina, and that represents primal substance. The matter upon which, for anything to take hold, if you have an idea, to make that idea become reality, you have to bring some kind of substance to it. If you can't bring any substance to it, it won't live. And so female represents the substance of the creative germ or seed. Just like women <coughs> provide the physical vehicle to give substance to the seed. They actually give, they give the the baby, the fetus, the idea of the fetus is physical substance so it can become a living reality. So the female principle is a principle of matter, or Mary, matter. Out of Mary came Christ. She was the virgin, which means she was purified. Not that a woman had it without sex, but she was purified, meaning that she operated from a state of purity in terms of virtuous and, and that energy. And that gave birth to the Christ or the divine child. So matter in you, through purifying the matter in you, which is your lower self, right? Through purifying your lower self, you then give birth to the divine in yourself. You understand what I'm saying? So Mary is matter. Again, they make it into a physical thing when it's a kind of principle. So here again it's saying then, showing how this is that the Divine Mother, the womb preserving life. So then this is related to temperance. Temperance is the bout between extremes. If you actually got into understanding how babies are born and the process that goes through in the womb and, and, and what's happening there, you'd understand what they talk about here in terms of how that womb has a constant reconciled extreme. Because there may be extreme cold on the outside, but by the time it gets into that, in that, inside that placenta, it's going to reconcile that extreme. If the, there could be a deficiency in the diet of the mother, but that baby is going to pull whatever it needs to create balance, although the mother can lose his teeth or hair or do whatever if she's not giving herself what she needs. But again, I'm just talking about these principles of being able to reconcile extremes. Let me move forward. It says, uh, uh, he talked about these different cards. I want to get into all that. He talked about how this card is also related to the, the Sagittarius, the archer, who is also Diana, the huntress, goddess of the moon. This repeats the principle that all of the figures of the tarot, except the fool, are Mother Bina and Father Chalkma under different guidance. Male, female energies. All these different things are nothing but different manifestations of male and female positive and negative energies operating. So you need to keep that in mind. That means that all things in creation are a function of the masculine and feminine. And interacting can give you a different thing. In her function as Diana, she governs the tides of earth. Remember, the moon rules the earth. So in actuality, in mythology, Diana is just the moon person personified. Because she usually hunts at night. What's out at night? The moon's out at night. So again, you can start understanding how they took these stories from these principles and just personified them. It says, and the fluctuations of the astral current, which is a whole other dimension, because the astral plane is the plane of the emotions. So you have the physical and the etheric, which is related to the physical. Then you have the astral, which is related to the emotional. And then you have the mental. Plane, which is, uh, is a, I'm trying to figure out, is another equivalent to that. 
there's a book called uh, In Search, I think it's Finding the Third Eye. I talked about this last week. And she breaks down the physiology and the dynamics of each of those seven folk humans. You have seven folk constitutes of humans. So this is related to that, the astral. So if you go back to the seven folk constitutes of humans and look on the astral or the emotional, you can gain more understanding relative to what needs to be balanced. Because the emotional plane is related to the vegetable kingdom, vegetation. The lower mental is related to the animal. Uh, she is a natural framework and support for the wax and wane of the energies of existence. So go back to the context we talked about trying to create balance between wax and waning. You're trying to create a mentality that you can walk through life, see extremes around you, be aware of those extremes, register those extremes, but maintain your poise and your balance in terms of what you have to do. It's not that you deny them. It's not that you ignore them. It's that you do not let them alter your unification with the higher goal. A lot of things that destroyed the movement, the main thing that destroyed the movement in the 60s was the emotional plane, which is this astral plane. So people's egos, male-female relationships, drugs, uh, unresolved conflicts, power trips, ego trips, recognition trips that start to motivate people's behavior as opposed to being driven by the principle that they were articulating. Because if that was true, people couldn't send no memo in here and say, homeboy is trying to undermine you. And I'm going to just start tripping off of it without trying to really see what's going on. Not accept it at first until I investigate it. But then what happened? People start getting paranoid. So then I can drop a dime over here, over here, next thing you know, this whole room is tripping. Can't get no work done. Where'd that come from? We then went to another level now that start, we operate from a different level, which is emotional. It's also based on fear. But when people start out, they was fearless. What scared is death? Stay out there facing the police. So if you are fearless now, why are you not fearless now? What's going on? So that means that people was out of balance. They jumping from one extreme to another. Because people was one minute hardcore gangsters. Now they're hardcore revolutionaries. Then they went back to hardcore gangsters. It was out of balance. Now, in the middle was a group of people who were workers. If you look at those people who were the workers then, they're still workers now. If you go look at what they're doing, they're somewhere in a social program, wherever they are, they're still trying to work with youth or social programs or whatever. That's the people who was in balance. But that's the one who didn't get no hype. <coughs> that's the one that don't get no recognition. They're, when they give all these awards, they don't ever give them the awards. They give all these the personalities of awards. They perpetuating the extreme. So I'm just trying to show how I'll take this and you know make it real. So then da 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 okay it says uh, oh he says the womb preserving life, she is restriction and control over natural energies. All of the energies of the manifest universe are controlled and manipulated within specific bounds and restrictions. That goes back to the standards. The standards define the bounds upon which to govern our behavior. So if we're saying that the qualities of this African is these things, then you have to... Ah, wait a minute. And that's the time he's supposed to use. And so again, it's, it's all related to the issue of temperance, controlling one's action and the passions. So it says, in their voice of ISIS, uh, Harriet and Homer Curry, they did a couple of nice books on, on number and uh, how they relate to, to uh, initiation anyway. 
uh, they have a couple of books on, uh, but I haven't read this one. Describe the universal mother as the power of bringing forth in humanity the divine child or the Christ. Christ is higher consciousness. So all this is related to temperance. You can't bring forth the divine child, which is also a root, without temperance. It is that which in every individual brings about the contact of the personality with the inner divine light. Go back here. You're talking about the bridge between the personality and the higher self. They're saying that this is only the probationary prelims of preparing you to make the full contact. Because to make the full contact without preparation, you blow up, you burn up. Right, the energy is too heavy. You, you have to condition yourself, your mind, your consciousness to be able to sit there and deal with this 24-7. Well, you cannot, you know, most people can't come here every day and deal with it. They, you know, they can't, they can't deal with it. But after a while, it's going to be like you got to have it. But at first, you know, a little bit at a time. So it says here, uh, this is, in the capitalistic terms, the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel. So knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel is when you contact that inner divine self. And that's your Holy Guardian Angel. Everybody has a Holy Guardian Angel. That's why we try to get people to practice meditation or quieting because it's, they say the voice of the silence. The voice of the silence is when you quiet yourself, which you... Here now is your inner self. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, okay, the question. Ask yourself questions. And if you listen, it will speak to you. But many times it speaks in terms of symbols or images. That's why you have to understand what these images really mean. So you need to study symbols and images is to really understand. That was also a part of the initiation. Part of initiation is understanding what the symbols really represent. So it says. Right, rising on the path of temperance leads to our bearing of the child, which is ourselves reborn. This goes back to the issue about the burial. Because remember, to go into a state of initiation, you have to, one, separate yourself from the old way, and you have to go through a symbolical death. So what that conditions in the, your mind psychologically is that is now dead. And I'm now on the, coming into a new reality. So, because ritual is just a psychological drama to impact the psychology of a person. When you re raise to a higher level, you don't have to have no rituals. Because you're going to be operating from the, you, you, the one. You don't need no rituals. Rituals are for the group, for those who have not or not operating at that unified level, to dramatize in their mind the, the knowledge or the experience. And so, fundamentally, and then it creates an emotional connection around where the theme of the ritual is, so you feel it. It doesn't have to be an intellectual conversation. You felt it. Oh, yeah, I, you know, I felt it. So you can just you feel it. You may not understand it, but you can feel it. Like, people just play certain music, you may not understand the word, but you feel it. It can make you feel sad or happy or whatever. It can be in another language. Anyway, so, but again, we're saying temperance is hooked up with bringing forth the divine child. Key 14 is the beginning of an awareness of the higher self. The card demonstrates not the experience itself, but how the experience is brought about. So it says the experience of contacting the higher self is brought about by employing temperance through an exchange and balance of opposites which can be only symbolically described. The use of symbols here has nothing whatsoever to do with secrecy, but is merely reflective of the inadequacy of language to describe the process. Like many people say the mysteries were the secret. The mysteries weren't a secret that they were hidden. They were a mystery just because people didn't know. 
it's like right now we're talking about nature and all this stuff and people are like I heard that but I didn't know what that meant so it was a mystery to you until you somebody pulled the veil off now you know now it's not a mystery so we talk about 33 degrees you're like oh okay I can understand what that's really talking about it's not a mystery anymore but 33 degrees you, you've been around 30 degrees all so it wasn't secret per se it was a mystery because people didn't understand the symbol of man so the temples were always in the public you could go know all that yeah temple bike pieces you know two blocks down and one block away but now you may not want to go through the changes to walk through the importance because they ain't going to play that's what I'm saying at some level there has to be a level of intensity that challenges people to really come to grips with who they really are as opposed to poop button around because you know a, a, a lot of organizations is like poop but organization <laughs> and we don't call each other on that stuff we finna get called to the carpet these next 10, 15 years, you're going to get called on the carpet. So we want to wait around until we get confronted, straight up, and then get jacked, or can we recognize what's going on and get our stuff together? So, let's jump down and say, oh no, this is EP here. It says, uh, Probably's card, take the card, and in the front of the, the page here, they give these different cards right here. And the symbolism in these cards are actually symbolical representation of cosmic principles. You see the wings, that's the holy guardian angel, we're talking about spiritual entity. They have uh, two urns, they're pouring water between these two urns. Let's talk about the dress, is one is red and one is black. See, all those things represent the interrelationship of opposing forces and uh, that have uh, really physical, physiological interpretation. So here it says, this card showing the process in alchemical terms, where fire becomes water and water becomes fire. And as we appreciate that the primary alchemy takes place within the body of the alchemist himself or herself. So you are the crucible. And the various metals that are being transformed from growth to gold, and gold represents what planet? The sun. So it's going from lead to gold. So it's again, if you understand the sun represents gold represents sun, and you're trying to create gold, they ain't talking about gold bullion. They talk about higher self. Alchemy is, is just another language that they utilized during the Middle Ages, although it came out of Kemet, because they it came out of Kemet because they dealt with transformation of the elements. And when we talk about the elements in you, what your element is, and then how if you are a fire sign, somebody else is a water sign, y'all come together, y'all gonna create an alchemical process. If you don't understand that, and all the stuff, all the steam starts blazing. You ain't going to understand what's going on, so it's going to be a mystery to you. But if you understand the nature of the elements of the entity, then you understand what, what soup you're making, what meal's going on, you know, all this kind of stuff. So again, that's what the process, alchemy. So, it says, as we appreciate the uh, uh, body by itself, we also appreciate the actual physical effect. The whip, the key word here is, the willful exchange of fire and water is the merging or tempering of energy opposites within the body. Here symbolized by a stream poured back and forth from one base to another. What is the symbolism for the age of Aquarius? Water and water. Right. Water being poured out of a base. Water so this has given you insights into the greater significance of the age of Aquarius. The age for the reconciliation of extremes and opposites. 
And then if you take that brief thing and look at the globe, and what are the major contending issues in the globe, you see how everything is being divided by extremes. Have, have nots. Developing countries, countries, underdeveloped countries. You know, rich and poor, black and white, male and female. So, that, so then that would put us in a state that calling for the energy of temperance. But then, if you understand what temperance is related to, you also see the greater issue that we've been confronted with. Because until we can reconcile that individually, but also socially, you cannot then create the environment that brings forth the divine child, which is spiritual consciousness. Good. <laughs> this is the living water, consciousness vivified by being merged with the fire spirit. The process is one of bringing the spirit into the body so that it tempers the consciousness and, and, is, and is itself tempered by the consciousness, thus forming something new, something which is more than the selfish parts. This is what's happening to culture. So when people come to dance class, I can call them a soul injection. The interaction with this energy is bringing an experience of the spirit to them that is having an impact on their emotional self. You really need to be conscious of it. Now, to the degree that you explain what you are doing, and they are conscious of what's going on, it then even transforms them even more. Which then also creates a tool to start to temper consciousness. And then you can think of more creative ways to make people have to make contact with it. Then that's how culture and art becomes a revolutionary weapon. How many different ways can you come up with to, in, to inject or have people experience? This energy. See, in the States, see, when we did cultural events, it wasn't the cultural event. We didn't do it for the event itself. We did it because it was a process of education and mobilization. And so we used the event to educate, politicize, and mobilize. Now people just get caught up in the event as opposed to knowing that the event was a process to start networking, creating mechanisms to mobilize people from point A to point B. And also the event itself had themes that became the, the teaching to then also politicize and educate those who were involved in it. So Kwanzaa wasn't just about celebrating Kwanzaa. It was a tool <coughs> that was used for liberation. Because you had to organize people, connect with people, communicate with people. So and you did that out of the context of a long-range plan, so you develop mailing lists and transportation systems and, you know, hiring of people that had tasks and skills, and then you could convert that into other projects. So you become more productive. So it, was, it happened in the context of the movement, and not just it's Black History Month, so we're going to do Black History Month. Or it's Kwanzaa, so we're going to do Kwanzaa. So that's the thing now we're operating out of context. And that's why it doesn't have the power. It still has power, but it doesn't have the level of power that it had before. Anyway, I can move through this. So the process involved, okay, well, let's get a little bit into this Yahi body, and then we'll, we'll jump out of this. But see, see, then it gets in terms of talking about the sexual energies, in terms of what the sexual energies are really all about. And the whole issue of desire, understanding desire and how the body has, biologically has desires. And how certain desires operate on all the different levels. Like all seven levels have desires. So a, a desire at one level operates at a different, in a different way, a different level, follow what I'm saying. 
But then because people are, are trained or conditioned only to operate at the various lowest at the lowest level, you can have a spiritual impulse that comes into your consciousness that's being that's, that's moving you. Because you have not been trained, what you're going to end up interpreting it as could be, I want to go eat some food. <clears throat> or I want to go get together with somebody. Or I need to get some power externally. Because your consciousness is still operating at that level. So then you then interpret everything at that level of consciousness. That's why I go back to the question about raising the level of consciousness. Because as we start operating from a different level of consciousness, it creates a reference point that then people can also see where they're at. And you ain't got to say nothing. You just come from that. And wait a minute, how come they ain't getting all tripped out? Yet they ain't running away. They still working. But they ain't getting all tripped out. Well, how come they can do five things? I can do but two. How come I'm always getting sick and they not? What, you know? You ain't got to say nothing. You just got to be. And then people will be like, they're going to be like this. What's going on? <laughs> he said, oh, hey, come here. <laughs> Check this out. And then if you get a group, it magnifies it. Expo -tentally. Expo -tentally. So that if you get five people, then it's going to be like, to the square. Then you get 10 people, it'd be like 100 people. So that's why I grew. There's a whole thing we did with group. But well, I'm just trying to put that out there. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, we get into all this. Uh, time is running out. So you got the hand out. So I'll, a couple more places here. One, I talk about Kundalini. So it says, what happens in the establishment of a rhythmic masturbation motion of inner energy? Masturbation, we just related to jacking off. But that's just jacking off. You can jack off mentally. You know, you have mental. People masturbate mentally. People masturbate emotionally. Just like you can fast physically. You can fast emotionally. You can fast mentally. We used to go on mental fast. Don't, hey, shut down. Don't say nothing for 24 hours. So it's group. When you start doing it, it starts to activate other sensitivity. It also gets you to see it, see differently. You cut off, I'm not going to be angry for 24 hours. I'm going to fast on anger. See if you can do it. <laughs> All those are techniques to gain control of yourself. Like when you fast on food and you're not around food, you don't panic no more. I go without food. But if you ain't did it, you start tripping. I got that. And that throws you all out of way. So, so it says, uh, what happens is this rhythmic masturbation motion of inner energy. The mental control of this energy is conscious manipulation is symbolized by the interchange of fire and water, or by the interchange of fluid between bases. Bases are just different levels, right? The key to this actually, actually simple process is the infinity symbol. The figure eight, which they use above the figure of the, they talk about the car, they have a figure eight over the magician's head, that's infinity. It is an ebb and flow which is confined. Again, follow the key words we talked about before in terms of that that does structure and the womb and bring forth the divine. It is an ebb and flow which is confined, is used within very specific parameters, thus the womb symbolism, but which is taken in either direction at will. That means you can channel it at will. As one changes the rate of vibration of this inner energy, one raises or lowers the level of consciousness moves from chakra to chakra, from path to path. That means that consciously, you can make things happen by either accelerating or decelerating your energy level around certain kind of ideas. You can do that personally, you can do that as a group. 
And that's what, how the vanguard of the revolution leads the revolution. It takes the microcosm of the new order and focuses a group's energy on that defined vision of focus. And by them generating energy in that, they create like a magnetic field that influences all those they come in contact with. And that's the little motor that cuts on the big motor. Or the little flame that cuts on the prairie fire concept. That's what we were talking about. They ain't talking about going through some bombs and stuff. They're talking about consciousness. So there's a law that a group of people totally dedicated to an idea will bring the idea into manifestation. Now if we take that back into what was that page in Stolen Lane where we talked about the four principles of creation, and we had that we talked about it a number of times. Right? There were four things. It was idea, substance, process, and ultimate goal. And that the idea brings to it what it needs to give itself birth. Because we are spirit, the idea of spirit coming into consciousness, we're the idea that has pulled together matter to create an organism to make that become real. The same technique is what can be utilized to transform self and transform community. But if, you, but if your group is not welded together in, a, in an intense way, you won't get them. It'll have abortions and you know all that kind of stuff. You won't bring it into manifestation. So, ah, uh, blah 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 blah. What else we want to go ahead? Uh, let's jump down to. Let's, let's finish up and I'll finish up here. It says to explain all of this in a more simple way, at the lowest level, water, which we have previously described as consciousness being acted upon by fire, the sexual kundalini energy, which is the libido, which is also related to the prana or the chi. All that's the same thing. So that means that we talk about breathing and dealing with chi by focusing your will, which is consciousness, and then getting into a meditative state, you channel your energy into that consciousness and you energize it. That's why being able to control with your mind enables you to start really developing the <coughs> development because then you can hold certain ideas in your mind. And if you can hold the idea in your mind, then you channel all your energy to that idea and you gain insight. But most people have monkey mind. You know, jump it all around. You can't, people can't hold things for no long period of time. And so all these techniques of meditation were just that, practice. It's like me sitting in my horse stand doing 200 punches. I ain't gonna fight like that. But I am conditioning myself to be able to do that from, from wherever. So it's a technique. Meditation, sitting down and meditating is just practice. And if you do it, then you can be able to just sit here and just go there. I don't know if you might even know. But you'll be there. You'll be, you'll be in tune with that inner permanent self that's there anyway. So, it says, says the, uh, the consciousness of the water being acted upon by far the sexual or kundalini energy. Also tell you what the true use of sexual energy is for. The highest use of sexual energy is not for just pleasure. That's mm -hmm. yes, not just for procreation. Because the sexual energy that we use in procreation is a is a body of energy that can also be utilized for spiritual development. So it's all one energy. It just depends on how you direct it. What, what do you do? 
So it says, produces the images. It says, this water being acted upon by the fire, the sexual cooling energy, produces the images of the astral, the pictures which form in our mind. These are the air, va quality, as our minds are the ground, the earth. So here you got the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. Fire is the, the, the primal life force, which is the <coughs> sexual energy, the kundalini energy, the key, the prana, the chi, all that. Then you have the water, which they relate to consciousness, which is also feeling. Then you have the air, which is the images and the ideas of the mental. And then you have the earth, which is the actual physical substance that this is going on in. Let me get into the whole thing in terms of how you feed each one of these levels in terms of trying to purify each of those levels. Because if you feed yourself off all kind of crap, and you're trying to then meditate and get spiritual, the physical is going to be polluted. Just like if I'm trying to grow some vegetables and smoke polluted dirt. I'll still get some vegetables, but then what am I going to be eating? So, uh, so this is the Yadi Vahi, which is the tetragrammaton, which is a, is a symbolism for Jehovah. So when they're talking about Jehovah or God, they're talking about the elements and how the elements operate. Which the Jehovah in the, in the beginning was that word. And the word is a perception of how these energies operate. And then how do you, how do you, the tongue is how do you energize? How do you activate? How do you move relative to consciousness? So again, I'm just trying to bring it back to you. Uh, then it talks about here is the different terminology. It says the principle is one of produce a consciously controlled vision, one which is limited by the will. This is this is the this is the key point. Word up there. The principle is one of producing a consciously controlled vision, one which is limited by the will. So I go back to the question and we raised it. What is the vision of true liberation for African American people? We do not have a coherent vision of what we're trying to create. If you do not have a coherent vision of what you're trying to create, how can you challenge your will to create? You can't. So it will not happen. That's the problem. One thing we did have in the 60s is we did have a fundamental agreed upon vision of what we were trying to do. At least for the period of time that we were doing. And then, of course, they started, you know, all this fractionism and everything starts coming to the But in actuality, the Kruma told us what we were supposed to do. Nationalism, Pan-Africanism, and Socialism but the African form of social, which is communalism. And nationalism starts with you uniting yourself, then you uniting your, your community, and then regional, national, international. That's where it's supposed to go. That's, and then we talked about last week, organizational African American unity, Malcolm told us how we're supposed to operate in the neighborhood. He already laid it out. Yeah. Right. Consciously controlled effort. We need to take a and we give people define it. Saying Long Beach is just set or East Long Beach is this group set. It should be a district or your division. And you say, okay, now what we what is our vision of what we want to have happen here? And then you focus and you make it, you can make it happen. Because you have unlimited potential. So I'm gonna uh, I 
that's a good note to finish on. Uh, I've got uh, water, fire, air, and what was earth? Earth. Earth was the actual physical, like here in this context, it was the, uh, the physical mind. The actual physical entity with which this operation was occurring. Right. It's like without the earth, you can't manifest it. In other words, material. Material. Right. Physical substance. The actual physical substance itself. But it's all that all I'm reading is in the handout I gave you. I'm reading from the handout. Okay. Yeah, it's all in there. All right. Right. So you can read the other two and a half pages. They got a lot of other, uh, those were the key insights. Let me give you that. I get one final, it's a, it's a meditation thing. Yeah, somebody will really, a couple of people may really understand what I'm saying. On the last page, 181, it says, uh, this, I'll, I'll start down here. It says, uh, the original duality, and we're talking about temperance, right, reconciling extremes. The original duality has been completely compensated. But after birth comes growth. After growth, puberty. And after puberty, purification. There is a perfect interchange. The alchemical red lion has become white, and the white lion has become red. Now, if we think about Kemet and red and white, what comes to your mind? Think about Kemet, think about red and white, what comes to your mind? Red is like hot fire. No, I ain't gonna look for that. I'm thinking about was it a red and a white crown? Upper or upper and lower each of each. So you also know what they're really talking about. Because the king wore the dual crown. So many of the unification of Egypt. It's also talking about metaphysically a time where people start to unify both the physical and the spiritual and the physical. Which then also brought about the physical expression of that in terms of them actually creating a physical nation that reflected the heavens. So it says, Water is poured on fire, fire is merged with water, all within a golden cauldron, which is understood to be the purified physical vehicle. It will be seen that a tiny arrow rises from the breast of the figure, which are arranged in the form of six planets of the micro principles, micro is the, the microcosmic man, around the sun. Or the method of successful treading this path is cryptically given, okay, the method of successfully treading this path is cryptically given in the Latin inscription around the figure. <coughs> Vistia interio terra rectificando invidious occultum lapidium, which means visit the interior parts of the earth and by rectification thou shalt find the hidden stone. The stone, sometimes referred to as the philosopher's stone, is the ultimate goal of alchemy. And the philosopher's stone is the inner self, the divine self. So by going into the interior of the earth, by going inside of yourself, and through rectification, through rectifying the conflicts and the contradictions, you will uncover or find that the stone, which is yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Is that book expound any of the music relationship, like you were talking about G sharp? Uh, there are specific books that talk specifically about the metaphysics of music. There's, there's a whole body. A couple of places, go to the Bodhi Tree. Also go to, everybody should visit uh, the, 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 the Philosophical Research Center, which is right off of Los Felix. And uh, 
is the first, you know where you go into Griffin Park on Los Felix, one block west, E, west, the first light on the left hand side is the Manly P. Hall Philosophical Research Center. They got a profound library and bookstore in there. They have a whole section in there on music also. And they get in the, yeah, but it's, they also have lecture presentations and all kinds of stuff up there. Well, you know, it's all, you find one or two of us every now and then come through there. But, uh, I mean, you can pick up a lot. But, but they have, he has original <coughs> ancient scripts and texts. He also has a vault where if you go to the card catalog and look up a certain subject, they will go get manuscripts out the vault. You can't take them out, but you can look at them while you're there. Uh, if you need serious research, serious. If you want to get in deep into out of print stuff, stuff you can't find, stuff you don't even know exists. Plus, he has a museum, you know, that deals with art. Because, you know, art, ancient art also was articulating metaphysical and spiritual concepts. So they always also deal with artwork because to be able to decipher their artwork, break down these principles inside that artwork also. So. He's um, gone. Yeah, he died. They got a number of folks. You know, still keeping you know, stuff going on and stuff like that. The library is still there. Profound. So, you need your handout. I was reading directly from the handout. If you got questions, write your questions down. Then I can refer you to reference material or try to ask them the best way I can, you know, just off the top of my head with what knowledge I have, or refer you to books or whatever. Uh, there's no way we can go through all this stuff in one session. So my thing hopefully is just to give you a lot of keys, hopefully to inspire you to a certain degree and uh, challenge you, you know. Don't take nothing I say as being gospel. Challenge everything I say, like the novel says, uh, the best knowledge, knowledge you verify for yourself. Paraphrase. But you know, that's that's the deal. So before we get out of here, they want to I know make a circle right. I also have a flyer that Maladoma and his wife, so both who are gonna be here on the twenty seventh for a one day workshop. Uh, so this is some information on just for those who are here. Yeah.